Hello everyone, welcome to class. Today we will talk about object detection and the image segmentation. What are object detection and the image segmentation? There are some examples. The first is semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation try to classify each pixel into different class. So it does not try to identify objects. It just try to classify pixels. It's pixel level classification. The second example is image classification. We are familiar with image classification. It's the most common computer vision task. The image classification has one assumption that it assumes there is only one object in an image and the object is usually in the center of the image. So because there is only one object, it does not try to uh, find the precise location of the object. Uh, but we can do one step further. Uh, we can do localization to try uh, to refine the location of the object. Uh, so it's for single object, uh, image classification is for uh, classify only single object in uh, an image. Okay. Next is object detection. Object de detection can detect multiple objects in an image. In the real world, we usually have multiple objects in a, a photo. So object detection is very important. It's very, the most fundamental task in computer vision. In real world, we usually need to do object detection first to find an object first and then do other processing. So object detection is very important. Try to uh, detect object and the segment the object is called image segmentation. So image segmentation can not only detect the object, but also uh, classify or uh, find the pixels of the object. The original object detection uh, can only find the box that include the object, uh, which is called bounding box. So object detection finds the bounding box of the object and the uh, instance segmentation can find the pixels of the objects. This is an example of object detection. The detector tries to find all the objects in the photo. And uh, each object will have a confidence score. The score shows how confident the detector to believe this is a person or this is a kite. We can see that the objects with clear appearance have higher scores, while the small objects or obscure objects have lower score. This is the demo video made by the authors of YOLO, You Only Look Once. YOLO is one of the most popular object detection framework. You can take a look of this video. In this photo, we can see that the original object detection is focused more on the foreground objects and ignore the small objects in the background. Object detection has high commercial value and it's a very competitive research field. You can check the latest object detection ranking on the papers with code site. You can not only check the current ranking but also download the code. It's a, this is a great site. So in the beginning, the winners are FAST RCNN and the, the series of Spester RCNN, Mask RCNN. After that, uh, YOLO, uh, I, I want to mention YOLO V4 has been the best in 2020 because YOLO V4 uh, was published by the Taiwanese uh, Dr. Wang Jianyao. And uh, Dr. Wang Jianyao has proposed a new 
呃 CNN model called CSP net. Euro V4 used the CSP net as backbone and uh, achieved the highest accuracy uh, in 2020. But today in 2022, the best model used the SWIM model, which is based on transformer, uh, vision transformer, and uh, has achieved highest accuracy. Today, we will introduce recent developments of object detection, mainly about RCNN and the YOLO architecture. Before deep learning era, the best model was the vulnerable part model. The first deep learning version of object detector was RCNN, which was published in 2015. And the authors keep improving the RCNN architecture. In 2016, uh, YOLO has been proposed. You only look once. The authors of YOLO uh, propose to use only one neural network for predicting both object class and the bounding box. So it's called you only look once. And there are other architecture, but the most important two are RCNN and the YOLO. In the beginning, researchers try to use a two-stage approach to detect objects. The two-stage approach includes object candidate detection and image classification. The first stage uh, is to detect regions, uh, a group of pixels that may be an object. Uh, this is called objectness. We want to find regions that have high objectness. Object, uh, the pixels in an object uh, should have some similar color or texture, uh, and the object has a closed contour. So using some features, we can find the pixels that belongs to the same group. And then we try to group those pixels. Those pixels, it's called super pixels. Group those pixels together, then combine, combine the regions using some criteria. So the below is the uh, bounding box use the pixels. Use the super pixels, then first we will have a lot of object candidate. Then we can use some criteria to refine the detection result, combine the bounding box. And finally, if we do it right, we can successfully detect the model here and the uh, picture. The most popular traditional uh, object is detectors. Uh, include object needs and the selective search. So the traditional two-stage method is first to use selective search to find the object candidate and then apply image classification to classify the objects in the bounding box. Object candidate search is also called a region proposal. Is proposed the region that may include objects. Region proposal is very time consuming because we need to scan all possible locations and the scales for objects. The objects may be far away or very close to us. So sometimes we need to do a sliding window approach like this to search all possible locations and the scales in an image. So region proposal is time consuming. The first deep learning based object detector is try to combine traditional region proposal algorithm with convolutional neural network classification. So the detector is called RCNN region proposal plus convolutional neural networks. So it first extract region proposals using selective search. So it's not a deep learning method, it's a traditional computer vision algorithm. 
So it first extracted around 2,000 proposals, uh, 2,000 regions, and then apply uh, the convolutional neural networks to extract features, then do the classification, uh, try to classify the image into one of the predefined class. So this is RCNN. This picture shows how RCNN works in a different way. First, we use selective search to find the object candidate. Then we apply the convolutional neural networks to extract image features. The features are used for uh, object detection. I also use SVN, Support Vector Machine, to perform object classification, image classification. And then the features are also used for bounding box or regression. Okay. We can use the candidate region as the default bounding box, but we can also use the convolution features to predict better bounding box. As we know, region proposal is slow because we need to generate a lot of regions. Uh, selective search generates around 2,000 region proposals per image. So it takes around 47 seconds for testing one image using a computer in 2016. And also the selective search algorithm is a shadow method. It's a fixed algorithm traditional algorithm that using shadow architecture so we cannot use deep learning architecture to find object candidates. To improve the speed of RCNN, the authors propose second version called fast RCNN. The major change is that to run the convolution neural networks on a homing image once and then use selective search to find the ROI region. In other words, instead of running CNN uh, 2000 times per image, instead of apply CNN to each region proposal, now fast RCNN only need to run once to extract the CNN feature once on the whole image and then get the regions of interest using selective search. So here's the picture. It used the, it extract the convolutional feature map once, and then use the selective search to find the region proposal. It's called RI, then do the RI pooling. Finally use the feature, RI feature to predict the class and the bounding box. Later, the authors proposed the third version, which is called Faster RCNN. This time, uh, they finally train a region proposal network that is better than the selective search. So, the major change is to use a neural network, the region proposal network, to replace selective search to find the region proposals, and then apply to the classifiers and the bounding box regressor. This is the architecture of faster RCNN. First, we extract the features using CNN and then pass the features to the region proposal network, which can predict the regions of the object candidates. And uh, the same feature has been passed to the RI pooling layer. So the pooling layer has region inputs and the feature maps. And finally, the output passed through several fully connected layers. And then the output has been used to predict the classes, uh, the object classes, and the, also the bounding box regressor to predict the bounding box size. Here is the test time speed of different RCNN algorithms. 
we can see that the first version of RCNN takes around 49 seconds to process only one frame. And the fast RCN has been much faster, but not enough. It still takes 2.3 seconds for one frame. Finally, the faster RCN can achieve nearly real time. It only takes 0.2 seconds to process one frame. So it's equal to 5 FPS. The experience were run on NVIDIA K40. Here is the summary of RCNN trilogy. The first version of RCNN used selective search to find object candidate regions, and it generates around 2,000 regions per image. Then it extracts CNN features for each region, for all the 2,000 regions. So it's very slow and uh, takes around 40 to 50 seconds per image to detect all the objects. The limitation is that it requires high computation time as each region is passed to the CNN separately. The second version only extracts CNN features once per image. And it still uses selective search to find objects candidates. Although it's much faster, now only take two seconds per image, but it still cannot achieve real-time detection. The main reason is that the selective search is still a shallow method, a traditional algorithm, and it's very slow, so therefore the computation time is still high. Finally, the third version of faster asking and replace the selective search with regional proposal network. So it's now used neural network to find object candidates. It's much faster and now it takes only 0.2 seconds to detect objects in one image. So it's much faster, but it's, uh, still is a room for improvement because object proposal still takes some time. In 2016, a new method called YOLO, you only look once, has been proposed. YOLO has a breakthrough idea that the authors propose to use only one neural network for both detection and the region proposal. Therefore, YOLO is much faster than RCNN because it does not use another network for region proposal. Here is the flow of YOLO. First, the author divides images into multiple regions. In this case, it's 7 by 7 regions, totally 49 regions. And for each region, it detects the bounding box, the object candidate. In YOLO V1, it's proposed two bounding boxes. And then it uh, predict or uh, classify the bounding box into uh, predefined classes. Finally, it combines the prediction of the bounding box, combines the overlapping bounding box uh, based on the confidence score of the prediction or uh, class prediction. Then it, this is the final output of YOLO. In other words, YOLO replaced region proposal with the grid 7 by 7 and each grid can predict two bounding box. The box can out of the region of the grid, but each region can only have two bounding box. By uh, using this approach, it significantly reduced the number of object candidates. Now it only have 98 candidates. So it's much faster than RCNN uh, with a little lower accuracy. There are the key features of YOLO V1. First, YOLO V1 uses only one neural network to predict bounding boxes and uh, class probabilities. Second, YOLO divides an image into S by S grid, and each grid predicts three bounding boxes.
and the C classes. So uh, there are five data in a bounding box vector. The x, y coordinates of the upper left corner of a bounding box and the width and the height of the bounding box. Final data is the confidence score. How much confidence we have let the bounding box include uh, an object. Therefore, the final prediction vector size is S times S times uh, B uh, multiplied by 5. Each bounding box has 5 data and plus the number of classes. So this is how we calculate the final prediction vector size of Euro V1. This is the neural network architecture of YOLO. The authors set the grid size to 7, uh, the number of bounding box in each grid to 2, so B is equal to 2, and uh, V1 classified 20 classes. So the final prediction tensor, uh, the size of the final tensor is 7 times 7 times 2 times 5 plus 20. So it's 7 times 7 times 30. This is the architecture from the original paper, the picture from the original paper. And the input size is 448 by 448. And there are several convolution layers. Also, this is the typical convolution layers with one by one convolution filter. So it has depth-wise several filters. This is the architecture of YOLO. Let's look at another example of YOLO detection. This example comes from the heartbeat.ai website. In this example, there are three classes, pedestrians, car, and motorcycle. And we want to detect one bounding box per grid. Okay, in the first three grids, the grids in the first row, there are no objects. So the confidence score of the grid of the tensor is zero. For the second and the third box in the second row, uh, the, the first one or the green one has a part of the car, or part of the object. So the confidence score is one, or there's a, an object. And the we can use the bounding box to detect the car. So the red box is the bounding box. Note that the bounding box can exceed the region of the grid. We just use the green grid as reference point, but the bounding box can exceed the range of the grid. Okay, so in the next uh, yellow box, yellow grid, uh, there's also one car, smaller car in the bounding box, so uh, we can successfully detect it or we label it and the, the uh, confidence score is one because there's one car and the, the class label is car. Uh, the second entry means this is car. The first is pedestrian car and the motorcycle uh, and uh, so the class label means there's one car uh, and the four data shows the location of the red box, the bounding box. In this example, we detect one bounding box per grid. And the dot, the small green dot is the center of the bounding box. And the yellow dot is the center of the bounding box. The four numbers shows the BXBY are the xy coordinates of the upper left corner of the bounding box and the bx bw are the height and width of the bounding box this is the yodo detection flow first we extract the cnn features of the image then we divide image into three by three grids and each grid we detect two bounding box then we filter box by the class scores. And uh, 
this shows how it looks like by filter out the bounding uh, bus without objects. And then we do non-mix, non-mix bus operation. Then finally, we will get our detection results. We use the intersection over union to measure the similarity between the predicted box and the ground truth bounding box. So we use the IOU to measure the similarity between two boxes. Here is how to calculate IOU. First, you calculate the intersection area of two bounding box uh, and then divide by the union of the area of the two boxes. This is the intersection over union. We can calculate the intersections very fast. In fact, we only need to check the upper left corners and the lower right corners of the two bounding box. Here is an example. Suppose uh, the red bounding box uh, has the x1, y1, and the x2, y2 coordinates, and the uh, blue bounding box has also the blue x1 and the blue y1, and blue x2, blue y2. Okay, so we only need to check the x1 and the blue x1 here to find the maximum value of the upper left x coordinates and also the y coordinates to find the maximum value, which is this point. And uh, we find the minimum value of the lower right corners of the two bounding box. Once we find those two coordinates, then we can calculate the region, calculate the size. If the region size is larger or is positive, or is positive, then there are intersections and then we can find the intersection area. If there are no intersections, you may get a minus width or minus height. So checking the intersection is just to compare the values of the coordinates, which is very fast. Once we made predictions of all the bounding box, we need to combine the overlapping bounding box. Here are some rules. First, we can discard all bounding box with a competence less or equal to 0 0.6. And then we pick bounding box with the largest confidence output as the prediction then we discard any remaining box with IOU greater than or equal to 0.5 so in this example there are two bounding box and the horizontal bounding box has higher uh, confidence score so we can uh, and the uh, vertical bounding box has uh, IOU greater than 0.5 so we remove the vertical bounding box or the same as the second car. This method is called non-maxima separation. To further accelerate the detection speed, the authors has proposed darknet, which has less operations. It's also a convolutional neural network, but has less operations. It's used mostly three by three filters to extract features and it's also employ one by one filters to re reduce the output channels also it has stepwise separable uh, filters uh, here's a comparison of the number of operations on ImageNet uh, we can see that DarkNet has less operation than GoogleNet and uh, VGG this is the experiment results of different detectors on Pascal VOC 2007 as we can see YOLO has much faster than other real-time detectors or the shallow model deformable part model okay so the fast version of YOLO can achieve 155 uh, frames per second the first version has less convolution layers it's, it only has nine convolution layers so the mean ap is uh, less accurate but still higher than other real-time detectors the uh, faster rcn can achieve seven fps but uh, 
usually we consider 30 fps as real time so uh, this RCA is not real time but it's uh, still much accurate than YOLO V1 okay. the YOLO uh, which the original version is 24 convolution layers uh, can achieve 45 fps all the experience were run on NVIDIA Titan X There are still some limitations of YOLO V1. First, it has lower recall rate and higher localization error compared to faster RCNN. And each grid can only find one object with two bounding box proposal or several bounding box proposal, but each grid can only detect one object. And it's stronger to detect small objects because the limits of bounding box proposal. So YOLO are difficult to detect overlapping uh, objects or small objects. In order to solve the issues of YOLO V1, the authors proposed the next generation of YOLO, YOLO V2, which is called YOLO 9000. Better, faster, and stronger. It's called 9000 because it can detect 9000 objects. So the key uh, features are first, uh, they also adopt new deep learning techniques uh, such as bench normalization. Second, uh, the authors use a higher resolution images to pre-train the convolutional neural networks. In YOLO V1, uh, they use the uh, CNN models pre-trained on ImageNet. ImageNet uh, provide images with 2 to 4 by 224 resolutions and uh, then the authors increase the resolution of butter tree. Although the YOLO V1 uh, support 448 by 448 resolution uh, but the pre-trained model was trained on 2 to 4 by 2 to 4 so now they pre-trained their uh, CNN uh, network uh, on 448 uh, by 448. Okay, the most important uh, improvement is the uh, proposal uh, of anchor box. The uh, uh, YOLO V2 authors has proposed anchor box, uh, uh, which we will talk more details later. Uh, ending anchor box can uh, have slightly higher accuracy. Uh, but much higher recall rate. So here is the uh, a branching study. So if you uh, ori the original YOLO has uh, 63.4 uh, mean AP on uh, VOC 2007, and if we add bench normalization, it will increase one mean percent. If uh, use the high resolution classifier, then it will increase 4% from 4%. Also, it's, uh, if an anchor box, uh, if an anchor box, then uh, maybe uh, the, the anchor is slightly lower, but uh, has higher record, recall rate. Uh, mean AP cannot show the recall rate. Okay, so uh, others are some, uh, some techniques. Uh, like pass through or multi scale uh, can also improve the results. So, so finally, the YOLO V2 has much more accurate than YOLO V1. Anchor box uh, is the most important idea in YOLO V2. Uh, remember that YOLO V1 can detect only one object uh, for each grid. Uh, although we can have Two bounding box, but we can only detect one object. So if we uh, have two objects overlapped together, uh, then we cannot detect this. So we want to detect the objects with different shapes, right? Uh, the horizontal and the vertical, and also we want to detect overlapping shapes. Therefore, the authors propose anchor box. Each anchor box has different 
default shape or the prior dimension. And uh, each anchor box can detect one object. So if we apply those two anchor box at the center grid, here's the center, then we can uh, detect both the human and the car. The first anchor box can detect the human, while the second anchor box can detect the car. So using anchor box, we can detect overlapped objects. Let's look at our car detection example again. This time, uh, each grid can have multiple anchor box. So suppose we have two anchor box, then here are the vectors of anchor box. Anchor box one has the confidence score, uh, the uh, bounding box coordinates, uh, and then the height and width of bounding box, also the class probability. So in Yolo V1, we can have multiple box, but only one class probability, uh, which means we can only predict one class with multiple bounding box. But for Yolo V2, we can have bounding box. Each bounding box has its own uh, class prediction. So now we can predict multiple, uh, multiple objects at uh, same grid, uh, same grid cell. So here is the example. Uh, we can detect pedestrians. Uh, uh, for bounding box one can use to predict pedestrians while the anchor box two can use to predict car. How did the authors decide the anchor box shape? They used the k-means clustering to find the shape of the anchor box. So here's the experiment results. Or they run k-means on Coco and the VOC 2007. And they try different numbers of clusters and they find that uh, five anchor box uh, may be enough for VOC and the uh, COCO data set. More anchor box can detect more different objects, uh, but the detect will be uh, stored. Here is how to predict the coordinates and the uh, width and height of anchor box. In practice, the authors uh, propose the variables t x t y, uh, t w t h, and the t o. Okay, so the t x and t y are the are for the upper left corner of the bounding box, but it need to go through an activation function. So the real uh, coordinates uh, b x is the t x has through a sigmoid function plus the uh, cell x coordinate. Uh, Cx and the Cy are the upper left corner of the cell, uh, the current cell. So the sigma of Tx plus Cx uh, is the x coordinate of bounding box B. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the coordinate of bounding box Y. Uh, Okay. Then for the width and the height, uh, the TW and the TH, uh, we need to calculate the exponential of TW uh, and the TH. Then multiply by the uh, prior width of the anchor box. Uh, so the real bounding box width is the prior width of anchor box multiplied by the exponential of TW. The authors find that this formula can generate the best results. Finally, the confidence score, TO, sigma of TO is calculated by the IOU of predicting box B with the uh, original object size. Huh? The original object is bounding box multiplied by the IOU of predicted box B and the object. If you want more detailed explanation of anchor box, you can watch Endurance video. Here's the link. Some of the figures are from Endurance video. YOLO V2 also 
adopt a hierarchical classification method to classify 9,000 classes. It's naturally, we humans use the taxonomy to classify animals. Right. So here's the example. Here are 22,000 objects in ImageNet and around 70 objects in Coco data set. So we can build a word tree. Use the word net to build hierarchical classification. So we first classify object into animal, artifact, or natural object or phenomena. And if the object belongs to animal, we can further apply different classifier to classify it into cat or dog or then different kinds of cats. Okay, so this is the hierarchical classification. This figure shows the performance of YOLO V2 on VOC 2007 uh, running on GTS Titan. We can see that YOLO V2 is not only fast now but also very accurate. Uh, it is slightly better than faster RCM. It was the state of the art at that time. The authors have continued improving YOLO and developed YOLO v3. As the title suggests, this time this is only incremental improvement. And this is a technical report, not a formal paper. In YOLO v3, the author used the feature pyramid with three scales and increased the number of clusters, the number of anchor box for Coco dataset. Here's the result. So uh, there's an architecture called retina net based on uh, faster RCNN and uh, the result has slightly better than YOLO. But the inverse time, uh, YOLO is much uh, shorter than our uh, retina net. Uh, so YOLO is still the fattest detector at that time. At the same time as YOLO, other researchers have proposed an architecture called single shard multi-box object detection. They call it SSD. Uh, SSD proposed to use multi-scale features. We know that the objects may be large or small or close to us or far away. So we need to detect objects at different scales. And the neural networks uh, naturally create a multi-scale architecture because we will uh, do convolution and pass through max pooling. Max pooling will scale down the feature map. So I also propose to uh, extract visual map uh, to use visual map at different scales for detection. So the SSD can detect uh, objects at different scales. Uh, object with different size. This is the architecture of SSD. Uh, as we can see, uh, SSD extracts fe feature maps from each uh, convolution layers uh, and then concatenate all the feature maps. So there are uh, a lot of region proposals, a lot of, a lot of object candidates. Uh, it's around 8,732 uh, object candidates per class. So that's a lot of detections, uh, but the speed is still very fast uh, because we already have the feature maps uh, when we uh, run detections. Uh, so that's uh, we just reuse the feature map for detection, so that's fast. It can still achieve very high uh, FES on NVIDIA Titan X. Uh, compared to Yolo V1, uh, Yolo V1 only have 98 per class, right? It has uh, 7 by 7, uh, 49 grid cells, and uh, each cell has two running box, so there are 90 eight uh, detections per class. So SSD have much more uh, detections, uh, object candidates.
for each class so it has higher uh, mean AP at that time uh, but YOLO keep improving although YOLO also include the feature pyramid now so you can see that different architectures of borrow ideas from each other so finally they become uh, more and more similar to each other as we mentioned in the beginning of this class we need to detect small and large objects objects can be near or far from us so it can be large or small one approach is to do scanning window search another one is to create a feature pyramid as shown in this picture so we can scale down the input image so originally we detect object in the high resolution in the original resolution then we can scale down scale down and apply the detectors again this is equal to detect larger objects or objects near near us right. so usually we will create multi-scale feature map multi-scale images and the multi-scale images will look like a pyramid so this is called featured image pyramid so traditionally we need a lot of uh, feature pyramid to have good detection accuracy but it costs too much memory because we need to save all the feature map and also it costs a lot of computation time as we know convolutional neural networks create feature pyramid naturally so in deep learning era researchers study how to use CNN pyramidal features uh, to reuse the pyramidal features for object detection. In a CNN pyramid, uh, the lower layer, uh, the lower feature map has higher resolution but less semantic value. Uh, then each layer will pass through a max pooling or other pooling technique, uh, so uh, reduce the size of the feature map and the, uh, the visual map in deeper layer we will have higher semantic value but lower resolution so we can use the all the convolution visual maps to detect objects and uh, search objects in multi scales there are several ways to use the feature pyramid the first is traditional uh, image pyramid which we need to resize recalculate the feature map by ourselves this approach does not use CNN the second one is the conflict or the CNN prediction uh, which use only single feature map only use the feature of the final layer to make prediction okay in terms of object detection there are two approach one is bottom up which is the ssd single shot multi box ssd use the feature map of each layer to make predictions concatenate the detect output of each layer right also has around 8000 around 9000 detections 9000 region proposals okay so ssd detect the object at each uh, at feature maps of each scale finally this is the new uh, method proposed by kaiming her kaiming her is the author of residual network so uh, the authors propose to use a top-down approach because uh, they want to use the higher resolution for the top smaller uh, feature map so it scale up the feature map and add with the uh, lower layers feature map together 
This top-down approach is called a feature pyramid network. Feature pyramidal network proposed to upscale the original feature map and add back to previous there. So here is the operation. Uh, you can see that it's upscale uh, to uh, the same size as pre previous layer. And uh, the previous layer will go through a one by one convolution, uh, which uh, is to process the channel and then add those two uh, feature map together. So a uh, feature pyramid then will use a top down approach. It first use uh, the normal uh, CNN architecture to calculate multiple feature maps. Uh, this uh, CNN is now called backbone. Okay, so you can choose different backbone, or you can choose ResNet, or VGG, or, or Efficient Net, whatever you like. Uh, and then for the backbone, or the feature pyramid will add uh, the extra pyramid network. Uh, so now this is called NIC. So FPN will upscale the smaller uh, feature map and add back to the larger or the previous layer. So create another different top-down pyramid. The first version of FPN used the faster RCN system, uh, which used region proposal network. On a single NVIDIA M40 GPU, uh, the FPN can achieve 6.76 FPS. FPN is much accurate, especially good for detect small objects, uh, but it's still slow, uh, mainly because of the faster RCNN backbone. Oh, based on the FPN in 2018, the Facebook AI research team and uh, Rose Gersik and uh, Kai Ming He has proposed a new network called Retina Net. This time, the Retina Net uh, adopted the YOLO architecture. Now they only use one network for the classification and the bounding box prediction. So now it's uh, more like the YOLO architecture, uh, but they include the feature pyramid or net. So here's the subnet. So they have, uh, based on the FPN, they have used it to predict the uh, object classification. And another network is for the bounding box regression. So they have a class subnet and the uh, box subnet. The main contribution of this paper is to propose four colors. Four colors can solve the class imbalance problem. It reduced the loss weight for well-trained class. So here's the formula. Focal loss wants the uh, training algorithm to focus on the class that uh, has uh, less accurate, less accurate class. The C is the cross entropy loss, and the F is the focal loss. You can see it has the weight of multiplied by 1 minus the prediction accuracy. So if you have higher accuracy, then you have smaller weight of the loss. The gamma is hyperparameter. Here, the authors try different settings of gamma. And uh, you can see that the well-classified examples have lower loss weight, lower loss, but the less the the class with lower accuracy will have higher loss. So the model will focus on training the class that has less accuracy. This is the performance of Retina Net. We can see that Retina Net is more accurate than YOLO or B2 and other models. Uh, but it's uh, much faster now. So the, uh, again, we can uh, adjust the parameters. So it has faster version and the more accurate version. 
uh, the more accurate rate version can be more can be better than APN or APN uh, based on the RCMN version. Uh, but uh, uh, the faster version is much faster than RCMN, but it's still so slower than YOLO. Keras has an example of written on it. So if you are interested to uh, know the details of implementation, then you can refer to this link. In 2020, a new object detector called Efficient Detect was proposed. As we mentioned above, uh, we can use different convolution neural networks for the backbone of detector. Uh, so the efficient detect is used the efficient net uh, as backbone. Also they have uh, modified the FPN, uh, FPN network. They use a by FPN network so they are now by direction uh, and they add more layers and then the layer can go back. Uh, so it's now by FPN. Okay. Remember the efficient net the architecture was searched by computer. Okay. So this is efficient detect. The authors of efficient net shows the difference of their feature network design. So the first one is the original FPN. And then there's another architecture called PANet, or PANet, which is bidirectional. And the third is NAS FPN. NAS, the network architecture search, or use the computer to search the architecture of the uh, FPN. And the, the efficient they use the bidirectional or FPN, which is more regular than NAS. This is the performance of efficient detect on MS Coco. The efficient DIT has higher performance, higher accuracy than other models. Also, it has uh, smaller uh, computation requirement. It can be as fast as YOLO. The authors use the floating points per second to evaluate the performance, which is more objective because the FPS may be affected by the machines. Some authors run on different NVIDIA GPU models, so it's hard to compare. Using graphs uh, may be more objective. Okay, so there's a trade-off uh, between speed and accuracy. So the efficient net D0 has fast, uh, the fewer Floating points per second, uh, the fewer uh, flops, only 2.5, but lower accuracy, uh, but still higher than YOLO V3. Here is the PyTorch implementation of efficient NATE and also the experiment result. As we can see, uh, the model can detect very small objects, uh, so it's very efficient uh, and accurate. In 2020, the maintainer of YOLO and the Darknet, Bachkovsky, and the researchers from Academia Sinica Taiwan, Dr. Jian Yao Wang and the Mark Liao, Liao Hongyuan, uh, director, they work together and publish YOLO V4. YOLO V4 has adopted many new techniques for in, in the computer vision community and has significantly improved the speed and accuracy. Here's the experiment result. Uh, on the COCO object data set, uh, object detection, Euro has achieved the uh, uh, average precision uh, better than, much better than Euro V3, uh, around 10%. And uh, the, with the same FPS, on NVIDIA V100, uh, YOLO can achieve more than 100 FPS. 
This is another result. Uh, AP50 means the average precision at IOU equals 0 0.5. If the, uh, the the AP means the IOU is set to 0 0.75, so AP 50 will have higher higher I mean average precision, uh, but but in both cases the efficient detail has higher accuracy, uh, but the slower uh, FPS or uh, Yolo still achieve the higher uh, accuracy, higher speed, uh, higher speed. The YOLO V4 authors have made a good picture of the architecture of modern object detector. So here's the input, and the main uh, convolutional neural networks for extracting features is called backbone. So we can use different back, backbone like VGG16, ResNet, uh, and the DarkNet. And the feature pyramid uh, is called NEC now. So the first is the feature pyramid or network, uh, and then PNNet by PNNet. Uh, those are NEC in object detection. And finally, there is the prediction. Uh, they use the features from NEC to do prediction. Prediction can have different numbers of bounding marks. So, uh, so now uh, de detectors are borrow ideas from each other and become more similar. And the last, uh, there is another two-stage detector. So here the, in the green box is the one-stage detector. So you only look at once. But for RCNN, they need region proposal, so they uh, will need another network. The one stage detector use the same network for the bounding bus prediction, but for the two stage, uh, they need another network to predict, uh, uh, to do the region proposal. Yolo V4 authors have tried tons of new techniques they uh, divide their techniques into two categories. The first is back of freebies. It's majorly in training, uh, training techniques, uh, like the self adversary or training data augmentation techniques and the cross mini bench, uh, different normalization uh, strategies. Another one is called back of specials, which is about the architecture. Uh, so uh, this is architecture refinement. We adopt the cross-stage partial connections proposed by Dr. Jian Yao Huang and the new activation functions uh, and the weighted regional connections and many more. So there's a great engineering work. Here's a brief summary of the backup freebies. Uh, so the also try different normalization strategies bench normalization, cross GPO bench normalization, and uh, cross iteration bench normalization, also different data augmentation uh, methods, and uh, different uh, regularization, uh, different dropout uh, strategies, also uh, different uh, strategy to handle data imbalance problem, uh, like the focal loss. So they adopt the focal loss uh, from the retina net, and then the uh, objective function uh, uh, how to optimize the, the uh, training process or use different loss functions. For the architecture or the back of spatials, they use the attention module. So they adopt the attention module in, in their network and uh, integrate more uh, features like the feature pyramid or network, APN, uh, 5DN. And then they expand in the receptive uh, field. Also, they do a lot of post processing. And then they adopt the uh, cross stage partial uh, network, uh, CSP. This is the final architecture of YOLO v4. 
the authors use CSP Darknet uh, as the backbone and uh, include the SPP and the PA NAT uh, as their NAC, the feature pyramid. And for the head or the final position, they use the anchor box from the Euro V3. And the Euro V1 has achieved a very good uh, performance and accuracy. Just a few months after Euro V4 was released, uh, the Euro V5 has been announced on GitHub. As we can see in this picture, Euro V5 focus on uh, focus more on the embedded device. So you can download the app from the App Store. The YOLO V5, created by Glenn Yuse, has no published paper. The author just published the uh, code on GitHub. He is the uh, creator of YOLO V3 in PyTorch. So YOLO V5 uh, in, is implemented in PyTorch. Okay, so uh, the performance of YOLO V5 is even better than uh, efficient detect. So it has achieved very high accuracy. Uh, YOLO V4 and the YOLO V5 have been published in same year, uh, 2020. So there is a uh, fierce debate about the performance and the speed. Of course, there's always a trade-off between speed and uh, accuracy. But overall, uh, YOLO V5 has uh, achieved similar accuracy as YOLO V4, but it can have much smaller model size. Uh, so uh, the YOLO V5 small, we have S, uh, has slightly lower accuracy, but it's very compact. It's just around 26 megabyte, so it's very small and efficient on embedded device. And it's implemented in PyTorch. Let's talk about segmentation now. As we know, segmentation is to classify each pixel into different class. This uh, task is very important in autonomous driving because the autonomous car need to know where is the road and uh, which is the pedestrian. So the segmentation is important uh, in the autonomous driving. One of the most important segmentation model is UNIT. It was proposed in 2015. The author use UNIT to segment biomedical images, to segment cells under microscope. <clears throat> it's one of the best models for image segmentation and widely used in biomedical image segmentation. In these examples, the yellow lines are the ground truths and the color region are the segmentation results. This is the architecture of UNIT. The uh, author first applied a convolution neural network. So two convolution layers, max pooling, convolution layers, max pooling. And then do upscale to do upscale convolution and uh, rebuild uh, the feature map. Okay. The key feature of UNIT is that uh, uh, Architecture will copy the original input feature map uh, and concatenate with the upscaled version of feature map. So let's look at the details. The blue arrow means that the uh, traditional convolution with 3x3 filter uh, with redo activation function. And the gray arrow means copy and crop uh, because the author uh, didn't do painting, so we need to crop the input feature map. Then the uh, yellow, uh, the the red arrow uh, means max pooling. The green arrow means upscale convolution, and uh, finally, uh, uh, 
uh, this arrow means uh, one by one convolution which is for the channel size so uh, here the input image uh, size is 572 by 572 and first goes through to 3 by 3 convolution so the size is slightly uh, is smaller than original input and then uh, max pooling uh, two convolution max pooling two convolution uh, finally uh, we will have a small uh, feature map 32 by 32 then let's apply the convolution again uh, until it's become 28 by 28 then we start to upscale uh, convolution uh, simply uh, then concatenate the upscaled feature map with the uh, previous previous feature map, uh, crop the version of previous feature map. So it creates a U-shape architecture. That's why it's called U-net. There is a U-net implementation in Keras. You can refer to the uh, code in our textbook. It uses U-net to segment animals, dogs and cats. If you are interested in the implementation of unit, please refer to this link. In 2018, uh, Kaiming Her and uh, other researchers in FAIR uh, proposed mask RCNN uh, that extend faster RCN to segmentation uh, by ending a branch of network for prediction an object mask. So it's simply uh, add subnet to predict, uh, one subnet to predict the uh, classification or the mask uh, of the object. So in this case, they can classify the pixel in the bounding box. So this is mask RCNN. The PyTorch uh, computer vision library Torch Vision has uh, many good implementations of state-of-the-art algorithms uh, because the uh, RCN team from is from Facebook, uh, so they have implemented it in PyTorch. So you can find faster RCN uh, mask RCN retina net uh, and other uh, other state-of-the-art algorithms. So if you are interested in segmentation, please try the code in Torch Vision. About TensorFlow version, uh, there's a mask RCNN implementation uh, made by Matterport. You can try the mask RCNN in TensorFlow from this GitHub link. Let's look at the results on the benchmark. On the instance segmentation, we can see mask RCN has achieved the highest result in 2020, but now it has been surpassed by the transformer architecture. Okay. This is from the papers with code. There are different segmentation tasks. The first is semantic segmentation, which try to classify all the pixels uh, into different classes. And there is instance segmentation, which is try to detect the object and then segment the object inside the bounding box. Now, uh, the researchers combine the semantic segmentation and the instance segmentation and the proposed uh, panoptic segmentation. Another good open source segmentation model is the Deep Lab. So you can try the Deep Lab is use the encoder decoder architecture. Uh, try to predict the segmentation of the input image. It proposed to use the address convolution uh, and uh, then the encoder decoder architecture.
about the semantic segmentation, now the best models are all based on transformer, Bayesian transformer. And about the panoptic segmentation, in 2020, the ResNet model has achieved best results, but today, again, the swing transformer has become the state of the art.